Hi everybody, it's Erin Scott here. So we're going to take a look at the annual cycle, the themes that are activated for this year ahead naturally. And you are looking at a scene, this video here of spring. This video was taken on the equinox, which was March 20th, 2021. And you can see here the ice is melting and uh, the sun was out and lots of activity. Ducks and crows and squirrels were all out uh, cavorting. So I'd love for you to just take a look at the scene, but we're gonna, I'm going to show you the chart here that I'm going to be analyzing and I'm going to talk you through a couple of the key points. Now, every spring in the northern hemisphere, every equinox here, the vernal equinox when it hits, naturally it activates an astronomical new year. So that's what we're going to look at, the annual cycle for this next 12 month cycle. Energetically, what are the natural embedded themes which are naturally activated by the planetary placements and the relationships between those planets, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to take a note of here, <clears throat> excuse me, is the sun is conjunct Chiron. So the sun as it entered Aries is conjunct Chiron at eight degrees. And that sun Chiron conjunction is also with Ceres. So sun Chiron Ceres are all together there in Aries, bringing about some energetics and trining the south node of the moon in Sagittarius and sextiling the north node of the moon. So there's a lot to unpack there. One is that the natural focus for you, your energetics, your persona, your decision making, your action, and your viewpoint. How are you perceiving things? How are you perceiving yourself, relationships, your career, your family, life in general? It is going to be connected to wanting to heal. That Chiron on the Sun desires to heal, to activate your own healing. Now for some of you this is going to be your own body's healing. For others of you this is going to be um, uh, healing of your, your life in general, your decisions, your patterns perhaps, but your, your decision making, how you're seeing things. Uh, what are you basing your actions upon? What is feeding the information that is driving your action set? So there's a desire to heal aspects of you. There's also a desire to heal aspects of your confidence. So a lot of you are going to be wanting to seek to heal your confidence, your sense of self, your construct of self. Okay. Now for some of you, you are going to have to contend with some illness this year. And please note that that whatever might arise for you is connected by harmonic trine to the south node in Sagittarius. So there's belief systems that are in the background for you that are driving certain activations, let's say, within the body system. So if health issues do arise, understand that it's predicated upon belief systems and constructs of reality that are driving certain manifestations and certain lifestyle choices that you're making. Ceres that's also with the Sun in Chiron is speaking to uh, a, a flow with regards to, a certain energetic flow as it relates to, number one, wanting to heal yourself, two, wanting to develop a new sense of self, a new sense of confidence, and three, wanting to become the healer wanting to become the teacher okay so the the Chiron on the Sun with Ceres can instigate the new self which is showing up not only wanting to heal the self more but wanting to become the healed self in order to serve others in some way so how are you a skilled teacher and healer and keep in mind teacher and healer has many 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 different masks many iterations, right? Again, the trine to that south node is bringing old skill sets, wisdom, 
You know, there's a seeking of wisdom in order to heal yourself. There's a seeking of new learnings and teachings, perhaps certificates and education, in order to become the proper teacher healer that you're here to be. And those points are sextiling the North Node. Now the North Node is with Mars and the Moon in Gemini, and the self, as it wants to pursue its own healing to greater levels and to become the teacher healer in abundance and flow, is connected to a certain drive, a drive to learn, a curiosity about things, to absorb different data points and information, and uh, wanting to communicate wanting to network, wanting to collaborate, wanting to socialize, wanting to move around, drive around, connect with, you know, local areas, maybe even areas that are not too far away, right? So travel in some way, shape, or form is also indicated here. As I'm recording this, I'm realizing that there's no way that this video is going to be eight minutes. So just relax and sit back because I'm going to go a little bit longer here, right? This is at least going to be a double the amount of time video, right? Okay, everybody. So that those are key aspects for this year. Going on to the second house, Uranus is there in Taurus. Now we're looking, by the way, the chart that we're looking at here is the archetypal chart, Aries at the zero degree point. Very appropriate, especially for this spring equinox point in the northern hemisphere. For those in the southern hemisphere, you know, this is your fall equinox, your autumnal equinox, your autumn equinox. But these, let's say, narratives for a new journey, a new cycle, is applicable here. So this is for all of us here on the planet. But Uranus in that second house in Taurus is talking about more revelations, more evolutions happening as it relates to your money, your things, your possessions, your stuff. For a lot of you, you might find that simplification, purging, cleansing, simplifying your life, you know, simplifying your diet, simplifying your food, evolving your food to a higher frequency food, a lot more, let's say, raw living foods, a lot more alkaline foods versus acidic, a simplification of your diet, a simplification of your possessions. So if you tend to have a lot of stuff in closets or storage, cleaning things out over the course of this year, and by the way, for the next several years, is in fact on par for what is naturally activated. Black and, and money. So diversification of income streams is also activated here. We also have in this particular archetypal chart, which by the way is correlated with Greenwich Mean Time. So we're looking at the prime meridian point here for the, for the planet, okay? Um, but that Uranus is, tr is a trining the part of fortune, which in this chart is located at 12 degrees Virgo in that sixth house. So there's a harmonic correlation to a flow of energy and a bliss, actually, in putting energy into your work, being of service in a way that's meaningful, and for a lot of you, also attending to your health, your own health and well-being, your own daily patterns. In other words, what is the lifestyle that is conducive to your own health and well-being? That's trining Uranus. So there is an evolution with diet and health. There is an evolution with money and work. There is an evolution that is naturally activated. So it takes your participation and inclusion in the process here. Because life is not doing this to you. It is activated. So your free will choice becomes, are you going to uh, participate in? and optimize the energetics that are naturally at play? And are you gonna step into the evolution that's calling with your the work that you're doing? Because that second house is also talking about an evolution required, naturally. A malleability, an adaptation that will be required with your work. And that's also indicated with Pluto in that 10th house. There is transformation, continued transformation, as it relates to your career and the goals that you seek to attain, right? 
So Black Moon Lilith is also in Taurus second house area of growth and evolution. And Lilith is trining Pluto in the 10th house, which is in Capricorn. So there is this aspect of Lilith, the empowered feminine, who might not be heard or respected by everybody, who might not be listened to or attended to or received by what she is speaking and saying or what her value system is. Because Lilith in the second house is you know, there's a certain level of the self wanting to just be free and wanting to do what it wants. That's what Uranus in that second house is talking about. Lilith is also there saying, I'm willing to be, I'm willing to do what I'm going to do, even if not everybody likes my value system. I'm willing to be who I am, if even if nobody else likes it. And Lilith trining Pluto, everybody, is talking about um it be you know kind of flowing with your decision to transform certain things to kill off certain things in your life to make the changes and take the risks there's a level of courage indicated here and that's what i want to speak to so there's a level of willingness to just be true to yourself even if nobody else gets it do you understand in that third house the north node is with Mars and the moon. Now the moon is at a karmic 16 degree point. And even the nodes, the nodes are at a 13 degree axis point. So we have karmic dynamics. We have potent dynamics that are naturally indicated with the nodal axis. But the north node with the moon and Mars in Gemini, third house, is talking naturally about, number one, extreme desire to communicate, extreme desire to network, uh, an extreme activation or motivation or driver to socialize, to connect, to uh, correlate, to collaborate, to network, to talk, to communicate with each other. Now, this is appropriate for this kind of COVID chapter that we've been going through and the restrictions that have been in place. Yes, indeed. There is definitely, without question, a deep desire embedded within the collective to socialize, to connect, to collaborate, to talk, to communicate, to hug, to, to um, have more lightness in your life with other people, to share experiences with other people, to travel, to drive, you know. Now, one thing that I will say is that, and there's more to say about this, but one thing that I'll say right now is that accidents in vehicles might be more prevalent this year. Thus, be mindful. Be mindful about when you're driving. Be mindful about your travels. Be mindful about the health of your vehicles that you're driving in. Um, the reason why I say that is because Mars with the North Node in Gemini naturally can activate accidents. There can be arguments that occur with this activation. There can be extremity with, the, with any planets on the nodes. And so the extremity here with Mars can bring accidents. And it can certainly bring, it could bring violence and conflict. It could just bring argument and friction and that kind of thing as well. But it will also bring passion and, and energy and enthusiasm for communicating. You know, so there's going to be a lot of um, energy and drive behind sharing information, learning information, communicating information, networking information, marketing. There's going to be a lot of marketing stuff, which, you know, Take that all with a grain of salt and pull back as needed for your own health and well-being with this stuff as well. The moon is going to bring more of an emotionality to your thinking. There's going to be more of an extremity to the emotional mind. So you have, and issues of the past. So there can be anger and resentment that rises from issues that you've been holding on to from the past repressed anger from the past, repressed anger from childhood, repressed anger from mother. This could all come out in conversation. It could come out in communications. This is a big deal. 
Now, that Moon Mars North Node is also trining Saturn. Now, this is quite good because that Saturn in Aquarius is bringing a certain level of responsibility and a desire to focus energy and attention uh, with regards to your role or how responsible you feel about showing up for humanity, about playing your role, about being responsible and self-disciplined and accountable for the role that you're here to play, however big or small, because each of you is different. You all have a different signature. And by the way, you're not all here to do the same thing. You're not all here to do it in the same way. So all of these entities that are giving you these templates of this is how you do this and this is how you do that, please take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. Because marketing will be very, let's say, prevalent in the year ahead. And a lot of, let's say, forceful communications will also be activated. So there are going to be, there's indications here of people trying to push their own agenda, push their own belief system upon you. For you, the growth edge here is to be mindful and disciplined about the information that you're receiving. In other words, vet the information and be mindful and accountable for your own anger, for your own response, and for your own emotional story that you're giving and that you're applying to whatever's happening. This is big, actually, okay? Now, um, the, the North Node Moon Mars is also squaring the part of fortune. Okay, so there's a big T-square with the nodes and the part of fortune activated. Now, for a lot of people, what this is going to do is it's going to activate movement. It's going to activate taking decisions and actions upon certain things as it relates to bringing wisdom down and communicating it out to people and doing it in service. For a lot of people, this is going to be health-related, health of mind, health of body, health of spirit, how the whole system can be made whole again, right? So there's a lot of impetus for action with regards to being of service in a way that creates healing for people, right? So that's naturally activated. That north node, moon, and Mars is also squaring Neptune, okay? So we ha And it's also squaring Mercury. So we have Mercury at 6 degrees Pisces, and we have Neptune at 20 degrees Pisces, right? So those two points are going to be squaring this particular stellium here with that north node. So, at, you know, issues of illusion and delusion and deception and fuzziness and confusion and um, ideations that you have or belief systems that you have about God or what life is really all about, you know, there's going to be some assertions that people will take. There's going to be some assumptions that people will make about what they think they know. And people will be trying to push their agenda, push their assertions onto you. And again, this is, this is your growth edge and this is your free will choice. You get to either drink it in blindly or you get to discern it and learn from it. So you take what works, you... you discard the rest or you put it in the background until you can reflect on it later and see if it's a fit for you etc etc okay <clears throat> um yeah the south node in that ninth house with sagittarius is um again about really getting clear on your own constructs of truth this year we're continuing this process of needing to let go of and evolve away from old rigid dogmatic beliefs, old rigid dogmatic constructs of truth. What do you believe is true? What is black and what is white to you? There are variations of truth. There are also certain absolutes. So you get to understand what is true for you and why you believe what you believe. Get clear on what your own beliefs are, everybody. For those of you that are, that are willing, that are at the place in your life that are willing to understand your own stories, 
why you think the way you do. What are your own imprinted narratives within your own natal blueprint? This is um, a, a good time for you to connect, right? So for those that want to learn more about the natal deep dive, which is an investment, but it's multi-tiered and multi-dimensional. Then you can be in touch, but there's also the uh, the natal analysis itself too, which I highly, um, you know, I highly recommend because it's a foundational tool. So for those that don't already know their own story and what their evolutionary trajectories are with regards to the narratives that are encoded, you need to know that. You need to know it. It is a foundational tool. So if you don't get it from me, get it from a qualified person here that you trust. Okay. Now, Pluto, again, is in Capricorn still. Uh, in this particular signature, it's at 26 degrees Capricorn. It's activated in that 10th house. What that means collectively is that, yes, there's going to con uh, be a continuation of transformations occurring with regards to governments, political systems, healthcare systems, educational systems, financial systems, civilization. We are on this kind of rounding out the next few years. We're completing a very long process of Pluto going through Capricorn. And so there is a continued destruction of old systems that is indeed playing out. And it's preparing us that destruction of the old is creating the compost for the new to arise. And indeed, we are starting to see the new arise, right? Because again, we have um, Saturn and Jupiter both in this Aquarian 11th house. So there is a new level of, um, well, there is continued boundary and limit, everybody, with regards to um, what's happening on the collective. This is part of the natural process, right? So we have Saturn in Aquarius 11th house. Yes, there's more blocks. There's more obstacles that we're still living through this year. We still have it activated. So there will be more social distancing. There will be more um, containment and obstacle of free flow of interrelationship and intercommunication between each other. That is activated and it's continuing. But use this natural process. This is a natural process. So for everybody that, you know, that bitches and moans about the, you know, the, the lack of justice about these containments and these rules and these separations, look deeper because this is part of a natural process. So for you, the question is, what is the function of it? There's a function here, and there's a proper optimal use of this function. How can you use the isolation aspects that have been activated or the social distancing that has been naturally activated now? It is continuing, so there is a level of understanding that it, this is a bigger narrative to you. This is a bigger structural process. That's what's going on on the collective level here. So how can you use it? Well, how you can use it is you can just show up. You can show up in a responsible way to the collective, provide your skills and gifts. There's no need to be anything other than you are. You might be showing big stuff or little stuff in one way or another way. But you to be a, to play your own role, in other words, to be who you are, your sole purpose here for each of you listening is to just be yourself, the truth of who you are. Not the limited wounded version, but the one who has learned from the intrinsic patterns and signatures that you have and have evolved into your optimal self. Okay, so what, who are you and what role, what can you contribute to the whole? That is an aspect here. Now, Jupiter is also here and Jupiter is creating expansion. So yes, there are some limits that are going to be continually activated for this next 12 month cycle. But guess what? There's also going to be new blossomings, new learnings, new groups, new connections, new joy. Um, there's also going to be learning groups, like a lot of people connecting 
in groups, learning together, uh, you know, gathering together at, you know, spiritual retreats, perhaps. And because that Jupiter is trining the moon, so Jupiter is trining the moon and the north node in that third house, there's definitively benefic communications and learnings coming from teaching groups. So a lot of people are going to be connected here. Now, will it be connection through technology? Yes, that is continuing, especially with Jupiter and Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus, which rules technology. So yes, there's going to be continued gatherings happening online. So Zoom, right? There's a lot more Zoom calls to come. But it is all freeing up. It is going to open up everybody. So just, you know, relax with it, breathe into it, and utilize the isolatory chapters of this time for yourself to go deeper within, because that's really the process here. If we look at the 12th house, we have Pallas Athena, Mercury, Neptune, and Venus, all in Pisces, all in that 12th house, the correlated house to Pisces. And this is about opportunity okay there's an opportunity here and there's a natural uh there's a natural process for you you're going to have a natural desire to focus upon your mind is going to naturally be focused upon issues of uh your soul structure karmic processes patterns not only for you but for humanity you're going to be seeing things both personally and broadly personally and collectively, individually and for the whole. So you're, you're, there's a natural mental association with connecting your own life process to the grander collective process, which is truth. So there's aspects of deeper dives here. There's an indication for the year ahead to simply dive deeper, to go deeper into meditation, to get still, to get quiet, to utilize isolation time, to utilize sleep and dreams, um, to connect deeper within yourself, to listen to your own consciousness, to listen to your own psyche, to go into the depths of who you are. So there is a level of mental receptivity here. Now there's a growth edge with that. The mind, the Piscean mind, and I have Neptune conjunct my um, Mercury natally, so I can speak directly to this. Uh, and this is trining my moon in Pisces. So I have a very Piscean mind. But what I can say is that there's a growth edge with this, right? So for all of you listening, for the signature for the year, this is a Piscean mind. So the great thing is, there is more natural psychic activity activated for you. There's more of a sensitivity, an energetic sensitivity that you are interpreting this year. Okay, So you're able to sense information and also interpret what you're sensing from the environment, from the energy, from the consciousness, from the aura, from the energy. Okay. That being said, there can be illusion and delusion that can come into play that you're going to be called to learn to discern. In other words, what is real for you? There's very much distinctly, keep in mind, Mercury is a personal planet here. So you are going to be called as individuals, as individuals, to ascertain the deepest spiritual truth, not according to spiritual dogmas but according to your own experiential phenomenal phenomen uh, phenomen um, excuse me phenomenological learnings so how what is your relationship to phenomenon what is your understanding of your experience that's what's activated and for you to interpret that through the deeper lens through your own consciousness lens. This is the call to action. And there is, because Mercury is conjunct Pallas Athena, everybody, there is an aspect here that speaks to um, confidence that 
Now, for some of you, this is going to be kind of an unconscious skill set for you. It's almost like it's happening under the surface and you're not quite connecting the dots about maybe why. You're feeling a certain thing, you're interpreting something, why you're having certain even insights and revelations. But for others of you that are naturally more connected to the unconscious state and your own unconsciousness, the level at which you operate underneath the surface, for you, for some of you, it's easy to go there. It's easy to dive into that place and to and to operate from that place. For others of you, it's it's more difficult. And for others of you that are more air and fire composed, you know, you might have a you might be contending more with issues of deception or delusion. You might feel a little confused or or crazy at times in this year. But that is simply calling you to get still and quiet, to relax the mind. Stop spinning into hyperdrive. Start understanding your own drivers. That north node with Mars and the moon in that third house is asking you to evolve your action set, to evolve your fire, your anger, your response, your mental anger, your emotional reactivity. There is a whole evolution here with that north node Mars moon evolving your emotionality that informs your mind the past signatures experiences that have um, created a certain pattern of response there there's a great level of evolving how your mental tool your mind operates in other words you are here to evolve how you focus your mind you are responsible for how you focus your mind. It's not, it's not happening to you. You are responsible for it. And there's great levels here of anger, maturation of the mind, response and reactivity, maturation of the mind, but also maturing how you understand how your mind operates based on past signatures. So for a lot of people, they don't understand why they think in certain ways. The thing is, it's all part of your natal blueprint. It's, it's, it's natural to you. But that natural base encoding is your default. That story, that narrative that you were born with is your default, everybody. You're here to grow and evolve that narrative into the highest iteration of it. To evolve it, to grow it, to mature it. Each function that you hold within your natal blueprint is here to be evolved, and you are the one to evolve it. That is your free will choice, right? So this year, it is going to be a more Piscean mind year. A lot of people are going to seek more stillness, more quiet. They're going to seek more meditation and more sleep. There might be more rest indicated here, especially with Chiron on the sun in the first house. Some of your energies might feel depleted this year as you navigate this process. And indeed, more sleep, more quiet, more stillness, more isolation, more withdrawal in some ways. Um, more sound for a lot of you. Sound, frequency, chimes, gongs, water, fountains, uh, being out in nature with rivers, oceans, water, you know, areas of water. That's, that's going to be a healing modality for you, but it's also going to connect you into your own deeper emotions of the past. In fact, there's a square between that Mars North Node and that Mercury up in the 12th house. So that square is going to, you are going to have to go to the deeper layers of your consciousness in order to understand your mental anger and your reactivity. Why is it that you're angry about X, Y, or Z? Are you asserting that it's because your truth is the truth? Well, ain't the truth. So you're going to have to go deeper there because there's more to unpack. There's more to dig up. You have to understand that you are reacting because of your associations with things. You are applying certain judgments upon people and situations that not everybody does. And there's a reason for that. You have to own it. 
So the owning of your own story is part of that deeper meditation process. If you go there, if you follow that call, and if you go into your own meditation process this year, this will get you to the place of clarity, the place of peace, the place of present moment orientation, as opposed to living in issues of the past, which is a karmic process here. There's also the aspect of um, getting present moment oriented. That 16 degree moon, by the way, in that third house, Gemini with that north node, there's also a need to evolve your desires. In other words, what are you taking action on? Are you taking action on the truth of your desires or the desires that you're, um, that you imbibed from your mother or your father when you were growing up? Who, whose desires are you taking action on? That's another aspect here, everybody. So, and there's also this karmic need to kind of um, collaborate. So teamwork and collaboration is also part of the growth edge here. Um, but Neptune and Venus, you know, there's also going to be this very kind of um, love, compassionate, and empathy narrative playing out this year. I'm aware that this video has gone long, but that's just what it is. There's a lot to talk about here. And I, I was fearful of that. I knew it was going to be much longer than I wanted it to go. So thanks for listening, everybody. So yeah, Venus, Neptune. This is the last thing we're going to talk about. So that conjunction, 20 degree Neptune and 28 degree Venus connected in 12th house Pisces is talking about a couple of different things here. One is that there is going to be this kind of unconscious process occurring for all of you and collectively that does value spirituality at a new level this year. So now for some people, what that's going to look like is people diving into religious dogmatic things. So stuff from the past, in other words, like some people could be reverting back to religions that they grew up with. Some people could be adopt, you know, could be reborn or adopting new religions. You know, there can be new imaginal religions that people are going to be glomming onto. It's a possibility. So that's kind of happening in the background. But for other people, it's not going to be glomming onto, let's say, certain philosophy sets or religious um, aspects or religious um, categories. Uh, for other people, it's going to be a valuing of consciousness itself, of life itself, of the mystery inherent in it, and a willing willingness to understand that we can't know everything, we don't know everything, and there can be, for some people this year, an ease with that. That I'm okay understanding the order of life, the organizing principles of living systems, but I'm also okay knowing that it's not all to be understood. We cannot understand it all. Humans tend to need to, um, you know, to uh, segment things out, to partition things out, to attempt to understand things. And this has its function, right? That's what we do because studying the parts does bring us information about the whole inherently. Parts always hold the whole in them. But you can never really understand the great mystery. And so there is a level of a certain appreciation that can be gleaned, can be activated within a lot of people this year. Neptune, Venus definitely does also talk about deception as it relates to lovability. So how you think of your own lovability. How am I, how do I matter here? What's my value here? How am I lovable here as a human being on this planet? We all have issues with that. Everybody has their own distinct narrative with regards to issues of love, right? But there will be areas of delusion that each person will need to move through, navigate through, and get to the deeper, clear picture about what their stories are about issues of love. So how am I valuable? How am I lovable? And, um, 
you know, how can I relate to people or, or whatever the storylines are. Uh, but issues of relationship is indicated here. There can be deception in love relationships that arises for some people. If you're not mindful and if you're operating from um, an unconscious way of thinking and being in this world, if you're not quite clear about who you are and what you seek, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to, in other words, if you are a person who's wanting to live in delusion and you're wanting to believe certain things innocently without being willing to see all of the truth of what that person is or what the situation is or what the choice is that you have to make, there will be, you will be, you will be tested in this way. Karmically, some of you will be lied to and deceived with love relationships but you have to understand that if this is occurring uh, it's correct because you're needing to see how you are deceiving self so in other words the deception happening to you is autumn is naturally as within so without as without so within it's naturally a reflection of how you're deceiving self so how are you deceiving the self it doesn't have to look exactly what as how you were deceived but how are you deceiving yourself? How are you not willing to see the truth? Because that's really the discernment factor here. There's also levels also of imagining your value and imagining yourself, understanding yourself, understanding the truth of you as a spiritual being that's incarnated as a human uh, entity here. There's a, there's a process that a lot of you are going to be going through here that has to do with understanding that you are loved intrinsically naturally, that, that you are loved and lovable and valuable inherently as in this life, okay? Now, that Neptune-Venus, again, discernment as it relates to all of those issues is playing out, and it also includes money, everybody. So imagining new ways of being creative, there's high levels of creative functioning here, definitely. And that Venus-Neptune squaring the nodes, right? We have it squaring that, uh, specifically, we have it squaring the moon and the north node. Specifically Neptune, of course. You know, Neptune throughout the cycle, essentially, is signatured squaring the nodes. So the areas of delusion with regards to what you think you know versus what you have experienced as your own knowing and growing and maturing, that that's a growth edge. But as it relates to issues of love, lovability, self-worth, self-value, how you believe your self-worth is and what you really know through your own deeper processes of contemplation, what you know to be your value and your truth and your worth. But this also has to do with creativity. So there's issues of creative inspiration, downloads, revelations, ideas coming to you. This might come to you in your dreams. It might come to you in meditation process. It might come to you just in silence. But new creative inspiration being communicated right so if you follow the inspiration and and activate that square that friction energy to charge up movement of expressing out what gets revealed to you this year that is activated also imagining new money new funnels of income right so imagining new things visualizing ideal realities when it comes to money abundance, uh, comforts, beauty, right? There's this whole thing about imagining a new way of expressing beautiful things or expressing things in a beautiful way. I think poetry, movies, and visualization, there's going to be new, I think there's going to be new creative, um, uh, what do I want to say? New creative expressions as it relates to film and video. Something's going to be happening here with film. Something's going to be happening too with sound and frequency. I think a lot of people this year are going to be recognizing that um, that they... What was I going to say? I'm sorry, my cat is, is 
crying in the background. Um, oh, beauties, what was I going to say here? Well, it, it went out of my head, but it'll come back. It'll come back probably in, in another reading. So that's what I want to say here. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that Pluto is sextiling that Venus. Pluto is also sextiling that Neptune. And what and this is Pluto in the 10th house of your career and the goals for achievement. So a lot of you are going to seek to change and become a transformative agent, right? Pluto 10th house, the desire to achieve, to become, to embody your own power as a transformational agent in your career. And this is sextiling. It's in a harmonic correlation to that Neptune-Venus in the 12th. Insights, revelations, downloads, deeper understandings of things um, as it relates to creative efforts, visualizations, storytelling, video, film, pictures, photography, uh, sound, frequency, music, even voice, right? Um, is connected to this powerful expression. So a lot of you are going to find that there are new creative emanations coming out through you with regards to your career. Okay. I'm going to leave it there, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful um, uh, rest of your weekend. For those of you that watch it now, week ahead, but also sending you love for the cycle, for the annual cycle ahead as well. Much love. Bye-bye.